You got sunburned in Indonesia? Yeah, it was, uh, we were shooting wild boys there and, uh, this, the sun and the, just, it just, just fried my neck. You want to know what happened to me in Indonesia with my health skin? I don't remember. I, uh, I, from swimming in all the swamps in the jungle, like over and over, I got the gnarliest rash below my, oh, I remember in my that. private area. I remember you sharing and, that with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So we first got, got to Bali from filming in India for, this was a long filming trip. Like, and, um, like we've been in India already for weeks and I was going pee our driver, uh, the driver of my particular car that like we were split up in a few different buses came out. I went, we stopped to go pee and he snuck up on me. A Balinese man, and he took a peek. He's spying on me while I'm peeing. He's like, "Big banana." Oh, he said God. that to me, and I was like, "Oh my God, this this guy's a character." Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Chris. I'm May. This I'm Rick. Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and today joining us is Rick Kosick, our friend Yay! of many, many years. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your 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 show. Thanks for coming out here and joining us. Yes. For our, our fun times. Rick and I met. I met you on my 27th birthday. Exactly. It was on Rick's 27th birthday. I came to Big Brother magazine to meet the guys in real life. Jeff Tremaine came out, gave him 27 spankings. They wrestled. It was, a, and they brought him a cake. I don't remember all that, but that's that really nice. I know that we would know we would be brothers for life. Yeah, I remember you were like, congratulations, you made it. And I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? He goes, well, most people when they turn 27, like Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, or Kurt Cobain, die. <laughs> yeah, and it's a scary but, age. But I'm like. Well, I still have a year to go. You just started. <laughs> I just started. <laughs> and I was like, then Jeff was 27 too. I'm like, what about you? And he's like, I'm at the tail end of it. Yeah, luckily. How old were you? I was 18, 19 maybe. Oh, baby. I was young. And now I'm 48. We've known each other for my entire adulthood. Yeah, yeah long and, time. And, um, but I feel like our friendship didn't really uh, bond more until after Jackass and into Wild Boys. And we really got to know each other on the Big Brother East Coast Tour. In 1994. Yeah, but I was all kind of like uh, looking at you guys like, you're all crazy. <laughs> we were pretty crazy. It was crazy, like, especially the diaper party, you know? like, And everyone's like, it was the, I'm sorry, it was the Depends party. That yeah. would have been the term. But I was like, I am not participating in this. This is nuts. Did you? No. But you were filming it, too. Were you wearing diapers while, while no, filming No, I was it? taking pictures. I, I was too I, self-conscious. Before oh. I ever met you and I just read Big Brother magazine, I remember seeing a picture of you naked in a cage. Yes. And why were you in that cage? Because yeah. I was participating in the bit. But I, I don't, I, I don't remember the article. The was it in an, like an S&M? Okay. <laughs> was it an S&M article? Yeah. That's rad. <laughs> See. But I'm not into that, so don't. None of us are. S, really, to That's, me, I think S&M is for, is for sissies, kind of. Like, pretty much. It's ridiculous. Like, But yeah. you know what's weird is like. Sissies. Yeah. <laughs> you... Were the first person to ever appear naked in the magazine. I was. Full frontal. And I, I don't... I and think it caused a tailspin of controversy. It did. It, was, it uh, really upset a lot of people. Yeah, I did. Tell us more. Well, back yeah. then, it's that's a, a what could be considered a never done before oh. in the skateboarding <gasps> world. I said some wild okay. things. <laughs> well, it's but, part of the know. wild things that really take people off, but it doesn't matter. But the fact is that you were... Fully nude, and I was like, wow, this is an escape magazine? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, maybe I, and I think I took the photo. I wasn't even 18 years old yet. Like, and Did Thomas Campbell Th Thomas Campbell took the photo of, of, it was of me and, and um, my friend, Scott's girlfriend, actually, at the time. You know, he was, a, he was an artist, and, and he, they were artistic photos. I mean, they were in black and white. I was naked swinging so, my wiener around. Wait a minute. <laughs> black and white gives it the term artistic? Yeah. If, <laughs> yeah. If, if, yeah. if the photos are in black and white, it's art. Okay. If they're in color, it's pornography. Okay. That's fair enough. And that's the difference. All that's right. where the line. <laughs> Isn't that true? That's the line. That's yeah. the line. <laughs> so you're safe. It's black and white. It's art. That's how we felt at the time. But like, <laughs> but yeah, I remember just. Can we Tom, shoot this in black and white? <laughs> can we? Switch can that just to this black section go black and white? Yeah, because right now naked. pornography. <laughs> no, we're not naked though. It's not pornography. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. If we got naked, we better switch to black and white filters. 
<laughs> and then you can have it on you can you know it's our I remember on this tour oh sorry what oh. phones Very Jesus. I used it for my notes I'm sorry for my lack of professionalism Rick yeah, I know this makes a bad impression no um <laughs> When, when we were um, on this East Coast tour, we brought a pro skater with us, a good friend by the name of Billy Pepper, who I didn't know at the time. But so on this trip, I packed in my luggage, I packed a pocket knife. And um, I didn't tell anyone no. Like, oh. I, I, as always, I have a, a knife on me in case I need to cut something. So no, I didn't never showed it, never busted out on the trip. Weeks down the road, like we're in Chapel Hill and Billy got in an argument with like this crazy drunk old lady and she sl- ended up slapping him she and might have a little slight of the downs she might have been touched by the hand of god a bit yeah, yeah. billy pulls a knife out of his pocket on her he was drunk too it pulls a knife out like and and i'm like that's my knife how did you get that knife it was like <sighs> billy did billy go through all of our bags on he that? did without us knowing like He's probably a thief at the then. time he was a thief yeah he was he's now reformed and much happier maybe but, is he reborn I have no idea. I haven't talked to Billy for years. I love Billy. We all love Billy. I was just kind of like taken aback by like, first of all, that he was pulling a knife out on this woman, but also that it was my knife. It was like- That's not cool. Why would he pull a knife on a lady? I mean, she was out of control, but still. He easily could have taken her in a fight without the knife. I don't know. He he was in a dark time of his life. (laughs) You should have just walked away from the situation. I stopped the situation. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. I stopped a few troubles on that trip. You and I did a lot of the driving in two different vans. There was a red van and a white van. And all the good guys were in the white van, the angel. And then the bad guys were in the red van, the devil. <laughs> was and I in the red van or the white van? You were in the white van. I'm a good guy. That's you right. had to do a lot of the driving. because in a, I did a lot of the driving in the red van because some of my passengers were often drunk on the road. So, But if I'm in the good car, apparently I caused a traffic accident. <laughs> oh, yeah, in Virginia Beach. I was wondering if you'd bring that up. So... <laughs> Me and Rick were both driving our respective vans, and we we're trying to find the skate park trash more in Virginia Beach, I think, or whatever skate park it was. It was raining. It was kind of intense, and um, I like had to. I was I was in the front because I had the directions, and like I had to pull out really quick. And Rick had to follow me, and it caused I caused some cars to like have a little. What, what do you call it in Australia? A prang? Prang. They had a bit of a prang. Prang or a... A bit of a prang. <laughs> wow. A bit of a Wait, prang. And did, we, you, but, but, did you, like, run into him? No. no. I, I just kind of pulled into another pull lane out. and, like, cars th- slammed their brakes on here. here to it was you didn't tell me that you're a good driver. I, well, I didn't. I didn't it was, I'm a great driver. We were he, both good drivers, though. I But I made him... It was one of those intense following situations <laughs> where, like, they were like, I had to pull out and I forced Rick to have to pull out, too. Remember that time we were driving in South Carolina? You're like, Rick, you're a really good driver. Yes. You are a like, great driver, So Rick. nice. So, smooth. like, I drive the speed limit. Yeah. And it was, like, smooth. The transition like... It was those yeah. people yeah. with the prang that were bad drivers. No, it was it was an intense it situation. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't. It was, it was the other car's fault. Driving too fast. Yeah, reckless. they were driving yeah. too fast. Reckless. They were. So, there. Absolutely right. I'm still a great driver. Yeah. I hold my record. Good. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you're an amazing driver. Has- we were in Philadelphia on that tour. Remember, we, we got to Philadelphia... And um, we went to like some pizza shop. It was one of those pizza places that's like, you know, iconic and big city, East Coast Italian types, like Rocky Balboa types that work there, you know. <laughs> and he's one of our group asked for like um, Parmesan cheese. And the guy's like, what? We don't, this ain't straw hat. So anyway, we're in there and Thomas Campbell and Dave Carney go upstairs to go pee. Oh, and um, Dave and Thomas left. All of a sudden, we see pee dripping down all over the counter where they make the pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> then the guy that works there that was, you know, told us it wasn't Straw Hat, sees the pee, and he, he looks at it, looks upstairs, and just goes running upstairs. Meanwhile, Billy Pepper's going pee, and the guy, like, tackles Billy. And he's like, what, what? I guess Thomas and Dave had peed in the closet instead of the bathroom. Oh. And so the pee dripped through the floorboards Ew. all over. And so we see the guy run back down. He, he walks out, the, runs out the front door, looks to the left, looks to the right, runs off. Like, and we never saw him again. He, he went to go find them to like, you know, beat them up. Rightfully so. He was pissed, but he shouldn't have been so rude when asked if we had any Parmesan cheese. I love the neighborhood uh, where Gino's and uh, the cheesesteak place. It was South Street where we were. And like, there's that, that neighborhood is just so um, early America. Yeah. And Gino's, I think that's what it's called. And then there's Pat's. It might have been it's that like neighborhood. It's like the rival neighbor. It's like two rival cheesesteak yeah. places. But I just like, 
the whole vibe of that area is just like, I just want to listen to, I don't like him, but Bruce Springsteen. I like Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> I just wanted to like, let's just put on Bruce totally. and just like play baseball. And uh, play baseball. It looks like America. Yeah. <laughs> Early America. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love Bruce Springsteen. And, and I love the whole E Street Band. They're incredible. I'm sure they're fantastic musicians. I had Clarence Clemens' solo album. With, and he had a song with Jackson Brown, who I later got to meet in real life. You're a friend of mine. And um, I bought it. I later re-gifted it to a friend, um, Jeremy Simer, when I was in junior high school. Because really, other than that song, the rest of the album wasn't that good. But I like Clarence Clemens, the big black guy that was played saxophone. So charismatic. Sure. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, so in Philadelphia, <laughs> yeah, that was, oh, so that happened in Philadelphia. It was just like the night of anger. So the guy never ended up catching Thomas and Dave. How do you um, remember all those little details? I, I have a very good memory. Yeah. I, I know you do, but this is like... 30 years ago. And, uh, and then later that night, Kendra Gaeta and Billy Pepper got in an argument, and Billy pushed Kendra, a woman, to the ground. Wow, I think he's got some anger issues back then. What's Billy Pepper doing now? Oh, he lives up north. I haven't seen him in years. Have you? He I'm just, sure when he sees this episode, he's going to find you on Instagram and say hello. Oh, yeah. I love Billy. We had such good times together. He's from Napa, so he's probably up there somewhere. He's a little guy. But he's stocky, strong, stocky, stocky, full of muscle, muscle yeah. bound. And one of the guys from a rival magazine at the time, well, now it's not, it's a Thrasher, the main skate magazine. Right. <laughs> like <laughs> The one that lasted, <laughs> sustained all these years. <laughs> Jake Phelps, he had written something that Billy didn't like about him. And it was, he put him in the most hated skaters article. So Billy was just so upset about it. And he calls up Jake and Jake gave him a little lip on, on the phone so he's like, Jake, I'm coming over there. And he gets into his car with his baseball bat. Billy was five foot two. Jake was probably six feet tall. Billy goes in there, leaves the baseball bat in the car, goes, walks into Thrasher magazine and beats the dickens out of Jake Phelps, breaks his glasses. <laughs> and he was such a firecracker. And yeah. eventually a few of the, the people in the office had to like wrestle Billy down. And like, I think they locked him in a room to like, till he calmed down. But it was like finding the Tasmanian devil. I'd, I'd have a little scrap. I've scrapped a little bit with Billy. I shot a really good cover He's a handful. with him. <laughs> you know, it was uh, we drove all the way down to Temecula, this really crappy skate park. It was in the beginning days oh, yeah. of, of them skate building parks. cement parks. And this is this place was terrible. But the sun was just coming up and it hit the hillside perfectly. And it's it a you know just casual ollie, but it just worked perfectly for a cover. It was a great, and they've made it like a National Geographic yeah. magazine. Ended up in a museum for a minute. Really? Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorite Big Brother covers. I love it. Yeah. And you know what else? The other reason why you guys had to wake up so early was because that skate park required full pads. Yeah, so we barged so you had to it. Do that, huh? Yeah, it was. I don't, I don't even think that park's still there. I mean, maybe it is. This is one thing that that people might not know. You have actually a platinum album that mm -hmm. was awarded to you. How did you get that? Oh, uh, well, I was gifted by the label or the band. I shot the album cover for the Deftones Around the Fur, and it's crazy that it kind of became this iconic image that lasted, you know, it's still kind of relevant today, you know? And uh, I think it went on to sell over a million copies. Rad. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, cool. I heard people talking yeah. about it recently, yeah. actually. That's what made me think of it. Was And they have a whole new... You know, fan base. They yes. do. Huh? Yeah. So all these new kids are yeah. anytime I, I, so I got this, you know, 25 anniversary sweatshirt and uh -huh. shirt. And anytime I wear it, I kid you not, I get like three com or a comment or two or three mm -hmm. and like, oh my God, that's such a cool shirt. Oh my God. You know, people really like that image. I, I yeah, I was actually, at, we were at a friend's house who's a chef actually at this restaurant, Murad, mm -hmm. and I saw he had that record. And I was mm -hmm. like, my friend took that photo. And he was so stoked. Everyone knows that album cover that knows. It's a cool uh, record, too, because they recorded it analog. Oh, yeah. So it has that really warmth tone sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to go and be there in, in Seattle and watch a little bit of the magic being unfolded. It was pretty neat. So wh where were you when you took that? So that photo, if anyone doesn't know, that around the fur, it's like a woman. It's like a woman's belly button. Yeah, she's in a jacuzzi in Seattle at their with their residence that they were renting while they're recording the record, late night parties. And you happen to be there? I was there just hanging out, you know, taking photos, sitting in a jacuzzi. And I just took two pictures of her and then I walked away and that was it. Awesome. You, you know, know her name? No. 
No, just a random that was there. Huh? I'm sure they know her name, and I'm sure fans know who she is. I don't know her name. That's right. But you know she loved, She's famous. I wonder what she. I wonder what I, she looks like now. I proposed an idea. I said, we should do a revisit. It would go back and re recreate the image. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then like I just got this look like no <laughs> no. She's down. <laughs> <You see? laughs> <laughs> that, I think that's a great idea. I think so too. Yeah, around the fur too. Around the fur. Like, see, see what, around the fur too. Around the fur too. <laughs> Maybe she, her figures changed. Maybe. Oh, more tattoos. More tattoos. <laughs> Definitely more tattoos. <laughs> Maybe a scar or two. Oh yeah, she's had like five kids, and yeah. you know. But I think it would be great. Around the fur two would be a sick album cover. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. We're I back. think that would be my favorite album cover. I was thinking the other day. I was in in um. A store and um, with our our son Axe and I and he he saw ACDC um, Highway to Hell album cover. It's super cool. It's got the band and and Angus has got these horns and Axe was stoked on the album cover. And I was like, oh my god! When I was a little boy, the first time I remember ever getting lost, I was in a store called Bino's with my mom and we were walking and we went right out of the albums and I saw that album and I was just like stopped and I was just intrigued Staring by it because I love the yeah. The, his little devil horns in his tail. And I, then I looked over and my mom was gone. And I got lost, I panicked. And like this nice security guard eventually found me and like, you know, rescued me until like my mom, they made an announcement or something. But it was all cause I saw um, ACDC Highway to Hell. I got to see the last ACDC tour that they did with the last lineup. <gasps> You know, because yeah, with Malcolm, yeah, with and it was at the at the forum, and it was amazing. It was the best thing you oh you the, ever saw. The way they performed and like the rhythm guitar player and the bass player never turned the back to the crowd. Uh -huh. It was a part of their aesthetic of how they, they walked up together, uh -huh. did the backup vocals, and then they walked back. I love it. But they never turned their back. So sick. They're, oh, they're, they had a routine the dial. Yeah. You know? I was yeah. so yeah. jealous really of of you. I I for some reason. I, I spaced on like getting tickets to that. And oh. I was, everyone I saw like that had seen that show was like high on life for like oh, weeks I, after yeah. that. What year was this? Uh, I don't remember. It was the last big tour they did in, probably, in America. You could probably yeah, find before, it. Before, you know, because Malcolm passed away. It was uh, probably 15 years ago. Yeah, 15 years ago. Yeah. I went to the one in and, New York. Yeah, yeah, I bet and you the did. Medicine. It was when yeah. you lived there. It was yeah. the last tour. And yeah. last US tour. I, yeah. You know, a lot of people there. don't know. With ACDC, they're, the way they do their guitars, they pan, um, one guitar is panned all the way to the left mm -hmm. and the other's all, all the way to the right. So if you want to listen to like just Malcolm, you can pan your speakers there and you see oh. what his guitar is doing. And then you can pan it the other way and see who what Angus is doing. And it comes together as one big sound. It's amazing. Like like if you have two headphones. Or in your car, if you can yeah. pan. It's it's so cool though. Like, because you that what they're playing is totally different chord, like parts of chords. And they're just, but they hit at the same exact time. Like it's, it's just such a cool way to play. And no, that's where ACDC sound is. And they play like full chords, but with no, I don't want to get all musical nerd, but. What's I, good? It's, come on. We're, we're already there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they play like full chords, but with no um, third. So oh. it's, just, it's just like a full. It's like an open chord. Power chord. Open, open power, power chord. chord. Yeah. That's what it is. And if you want to get that big, it's like ACDC, this finger, this finger, and this finger. They don't like if you do a G, you mute the A string. Yeah. <laughs> But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry, my <laughs> that's just my train of thought. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But some people will know what I'm talking about. And it could inspire some young guitarists. Sure. <laughs> they want to get that same sound. <laughs> no, they'll never be able to do it. Sorry. So we can always edit that out. <laughs> no, no. Super cute. No, I don't want to edit that out. That's oh, perfect. Oh, awesome. Chris. So you grew up in Stanton? Yeah, in Orange County, an area called Stanton. What was that like? Uh, you know, I went back there recently to visit it and what it was, I pulled, uh, I went down to Garden Grove to go see Pennywise play at that outdoor arena theater. Mm -hmm. And it's like a small theater. And I brought Shad with me and I'm like, oh, let's go. You know, we're, there's a lot of traffic. So mm -hmm. like, let's go this way. And I want to go by where I grew up. And I was like, when we get there. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I don't know, man. I just had this realization, like how lucky I am to experience all the things I've been through. Mm hmm and I've just, I'm so, so much gratitude because I've, I got out. You yeah. came from humble beginnings. Well, humble, you know, not a lot of money. Yeah. And uh, it's definitely like, you could tell it's like not a very wealthy area, you know, you yeah. it just has this look to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, 
I am so grateful for everything that's happened to me. I've I've been around the world. I've experienced all. I've been part of five number one movies in America. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just done a lot of great things with my friends, you know. And I'm, you know, a lot of people I remember growing up with at that time didn't experience that. You never got out. A lot of drugs and, like, they all fell apart, you know, Mm -hmm. or jail. I I like that you have such gratitude for everything that you've gotten to experience. And, And a lot of it. Is due to skateboarding. Skateboarding completely save my fucking ass. Me too. I have so much gratitude towards skateboarding. Yeah. Everywhere we've gotten in life was because of skateboarding. Mm-hmm. And I remember the time where I go, oh, I want to get back in and ride my board. And I remember all the people I was, I was surrounded with kind of went away. And mm-hmm. I just kind of started just pushing this direction yeah. and never turned back. Totally. Yeah. And just see where it takes you. Oh. That's what I always tell everyone. Like, you know, even though we're not like skateboarding every day now, but everywhere we've gotten in life is an extension of skateboarding because Back, especially when we grew up, there wasn't like skate parks. And if you were a skateboarder, you were like the misfits. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't accepted. Yeah. If, if you didn't relate to team sports, you could either be a ner- like a like just an outcast or like on the football team. But if you didn't want to do anything like that, skateboarding was like. It was a common ground. But you still wanted to like do sports. You could either do martial arts, gymnastics yeah. or skateboarding. Like, and so skateboarding is like this culture of like the misfits. Yeah. Like, Did you ever see that movie mid 90s? Yeah. So you remember the scene where the kid's in the driveway when he's trying to do ollies and he accidentally does like a kickflip and he's like looking around like, did you see yeah. that? I had one of those moments really? where I'm like just skating on the sidewalk and I did an ollie and I did accidentally made a kickflip and I'm like, oh, did anyone see that? Yeah, I think that's <laughs> awesome. I love that. I was yeah. so stoked. I'm like, I just did a kickflip. I love it. And I didn't even try to. Oh, that's so <laughs> rad. Did, did you, do you remember like back then, I don't know how it was where you, where you grew up, but like where I grew up, like a lot, of, like when you'd be skating, like at like a shopping center at night, like, like people would drive by and like mess with you, like for being a skater, like throw stuff at you or try to beat you up or beat up the skaters. You know? I don't think so. I think skateboarding was kind of accepted. I felt like, you know, I, but I do remember, you know, where in the neighborhood where I was growing up, there was like. They were building all these new condos, mm-hmm. and we stole all the wood to build oh, yeah. to right. build a quarter pipe. And so they caught wind at where it was happening. So I got super. It was in my mom's garage, and uh-huh. I got super scared. So the house the next door was abandoned. Uh-huh. So we took the ramp and shoved it in, in that garage. And I was like, until they, you know, yeah. we kept it cool. We stopped riding, and I was like. We got away with it, you know, totally. and then so we didn't get busted. Yeah, that's the way how skaters used to like like make their ramps was to steal from construction Before sites. Yeah, steal, steal. Yeah. Oh, there was no cameras. Yeah. All, no. all those ramps, Before early eighties that, ramps, were yeah. all like, yeah. they were all made stuff. of stolen wood. Yeah, like every ramp back then was all stolen wood. Totally. <laughs> and some ramps. I remember the first like ramp I I saw that like quarter pipe was just um, in my town. It was like said locals only. I was like. Like, what are they worried about? Like, feel from some other town riding this crap? I mean, him? we were building something that was constructive and positive, right? <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. It teaches you, it taught, it taught us how to be good carpenters. Sure. <laughs> Might not have been the best transition, but hey, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> Rick and I have traveled around the world together, literally, like, mm, yeah. like to like far reaches of the world. Like, I got a question for you with that. Huh. What is the biggest life lesson you took from being a part of the Wild Boys? You can go, you know what, this is what I really got out of Wild Boys. If I could sum it up, I'd say as far as with people goes, no matter where you go, what language people speak, what color their skin is, we, we're all the same. Besides, like, those little outside differences, basically, there's little differences with the way we dress. Maybe people have a different religion, but really, you know, like Steve said once, he said, everyone thinks farts are funny. That's true. Like farts are funny no matter where you're where you yeah. go. But actually that I shouldn't say that. That's Steve's Steve's quote. I think uh give us a Chris quote. Those are just magical yeah. when they come. Yeah. I feel I, uh, like I feel like my life really changed our after our first trip to India. Oh god. And the the things I was exposed to and learned and saw and I'm like, man, I'm never the things I was complaining about, you know, we at the time growing up, you yeah. know, like that all came to an end. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. like I'm we've got so much here. Yeah. yeah. To be grateful for. Uh, yeah, you yeah. really realize like the poorest person here oh. is is not that bad yeah. of a deal. Like at least like if they need some food, they can get it. Yeah. Remember the uh, day we went and filmed you with the snake charmer, the little midget? In the slums, yeah. Oh, man. And then when I was like, we're in the van. I'm like, so where are we going to go shoot this at? And the guy goes, right there. And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. whoa. 
what are we walking into? So I'm like, got my camera bag and my tripod. And I'm like trying to step over all the urine mm -hmm. and like all these little kids are coming run up and just wanted to touch me because yeah, I yeah. look like a God to them. Yeah. You know, cause I look fat and wealthy. Uh -huh. <laughs> they yeah. have nothing, yeah. you know? And like, and I was like, ah, and like, they're all watch where you step. Cause there's a hole. Cause that's where they poop. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Deep in the shanty town. You it know, was like the slums. so heavy. Yeah. You were heartbreaking, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it's just, yeah. But we pulled off an amazing bit, yeah. and uh, one of the guys from that production company stepped in the poop hole, and yeah. they all laughed at him. I think <laughs> when you see that, when you see that type yeah. of lifestyle coming from a Western society, yeah. and you see that way of living, mm -hmm. you never take anything for granted. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No. That's right. That's like right. When, you're here, you're like, when you're here in yeah. America, when you're here in, a, you're in Australia, anywhere, anywhere that has like running flushing toilets yeah. and running water simple and things. hot water coming out of clean water you, clean water absolutely the simple things and the little, little things simple things yeah, yeah. and, and you, you know you wonder like how long was their lifespan probably not very long no you know? no no, no. And it's, Sickness, like, and disease. life comes yeah. and goes so fast and and to like be able to travel around the world yeah. with my friends and do animal stuff in nature in the jungle that was my dream since i was a little boy when you ask me what the, the biggest lesson I took from Wild Boys is, if you meet like-minded people in life mm -hmm. and together your personalities just multiply, you can do anything you want. Yeah. Because that's where our, I mean, our past started with skateboarding, but it ended up taking us so like so much further. And, and you know, we all came from the same kind of common thread, but like- It's, it's interesting, you know, cause like right now I'm making my book and I'm kind of writing stories and it's kind of like some of the things that happen early on were like, what was to come down the road mm -hmm. in our lives? And I, and I, now I'm looking back and seeing, I'm like, oh, wow. This is like a little foreshad foreshadowing of what's to come, uh -huh. you know, and like not realize it at the time, but now I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What'd you think of Brazil um, when we were filming there? You know, it was the second time I've, I got to travel there because I went there during Big Brother and uh, it was cool. You know, I enjoyed it. When we were talking about the shanty town in India, remember that? I mean, it's much different, but we were in the favela in, in um, Brazil. There was like this concrete um, half pipe. It's all different now, but at the time there was like this concrete half pipe in this favela. And um, we had to get permission. The Our Brazilian crew like called the drug dealers that actually control yeah, and they like, the area in. and, and um, got permission for us to go film. I'd seen it in a skate video with like Bob Burnquist skating yeah. like this. That was pretty special, you it know, was. and they were... And all Luckily, this, we didn't get in trouble. You know? No, it was sick. And the skater that, like, he couldn't really walk. Oh, he was the skating guy. on his butt, but he was rad. And he was yeah, there's a lot it. of that there. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Everyone was super cool. That, that ramp was sketchy as hell. To, I I'm mean, sure it wasn't transitions. The, <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't the best, <laughs> no, you know, built, whatever. But no, we were, No, we were totally safe there, though. Brazil was, I remember being fun. I think my least favorite country was Mexico. I thought it was the most dangerous. Oh, it, it, you, know, you guys got some. How long ago was this? It was during Wild Boys, oh, and we yeah. shot the El Baracho uh -huh. uh, segment in uh, Acapulco, and I thought we were never coming home. Oh, really? Yeah. Was, yeah, what happened? Yeah. I, we were split crews, what, what so you, yeah, tell us what happened. What made you feel like so, it was really dangerous? First of all, when we're there, I'm like, why is there so many military everywhere? Oh. Like, and I'm like, what's going on here? Uh, like, this is kind of gnarly. Like, yeah. and then a guy goes, oh, because our driver bill, because of drugs. Uh, we were filming in an area where technically we should not have been in. Is like on the other side of the road. On one side of the road where the, you got the ocean is beautiful. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the road, not so pretty. Mm -hmm. I just remember we were waiting to get permission to go into this bar to go shoot the el the, the segment where yeah. Steve-O drinks the whole bottle of mezcal to get to the worm. Oh, my God. And we're sitting in, in our car waiting. And next thing this vehicle comes behind. I'm not thinking anything of it. Next uh -huh. thing you know, our whole vehicle is surrounded by guys with machine guns. And I'm like, what is going on? And it's just typical, like a Western kind of scene where the, the handsome negotiator comes up and he's like, Hey, or, you know, he does all the talking. Yeah. And like, I'm like, this is really like it in the movies. Sketchy. It's sketchy. I was scared. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> luckily our fixers worked it out, but man, we were probably this close to never coming home. Do you think they were just trying to shake you down for money? Who knows? Who knows? Huh? Who knows? I traveled quite a bit in Mexico and, and, um, what I, I one time was in this one situation where they like they had it rigged up where the, the road suddenly became one way mm. where you're the way you're going is the opposite way that you're allowed to go. And they were trying to like, um, you know, like tell me oh, I'm in big trouble and scare me and tell, tell me I'm going to have to go to jail. I say, oh, well, um, can I just pay the fine here? You know, that's 
this is the kind of sneaky way of saying like, I'll give you a, you know, I'll give you some money, you know, without saying, I right, here, can I bribe you to leave me alone? And I noticed like, once you're out of the tourist area, it's pretty much, it's totally cool, but it's the the most dangerous places to me that like are Royal like places like that. Yeah. yeah. And they always used to give away free vacations to Acapulco on the price is right. Oh yeah. <laughs> and they never came back. <laughs> and they never came back. <laughs> they never came back. Tremaine's 50th birthday. We go down to Cabo San Lucas for his birthday, stay at this beautiful house on the beach, and we're enjoying it. We had the best time, remember? Right, it was, it was wonderful. such a nice time. And we were just eating, and drinks. When we got back from dinner, bullets. remember the winds had started, but the hurricane hadn't hit yet. Oh, yeah. And and we looked, there was a big seawall in front of the in front of the where house. we were staying. Yeah. The waves were breaking against it and then going back and then we had to like board up the whole house. Yes. I remember like the, the, the house caretakers were doing all the work and I'm like, I looked at everyone I'm like, listen, this is our lives. Yeah. Yeah. We should be helping these guys too. And you not know? playing cornhole in the living Yeah, room. come on. We like, did. And we, bore, we, we all helped. <laughs> yeah, we helped. Yeah, we we boarded it up. Up. But I remember like that night you and, and, and Rick went out and walked to do it, go check it out. And I was like, what's it like? Because I, I, I stayed behind. Remember, I stayed yeah. underneath the shelter. You two were like... It hurts. The rain hurts. Hurts because it's so windy. Yeah. What it felt like to me, I'd never been in a hurricane before, and and that was like um, early on in it before it got really bad. But it was like weather from every direction. Yeah. That's what yeah, it felt yeah, like to me. It's just kind of like just it was crazy. Just chaos. And then, I mean, where where May and I's room was, it happened to be pretty sheltered, so yeah. we slept pretty soundly through the night. Uh, but for everyone else, it was a pretty rough night. <laughs> I remember I, I, I had an ear infection it. too, man. I was like kind of not feeling good. And I slept just, through it. Oh, yeah, I slept like a baby. And then the next morning, I remember, like, we, we went and looked at the beach, and it was all, the sand was gone. But remember, we went for that walk, and we saw that baby moray right. eel on the on the sand. Yeah. And we um, it had been, like, launched, like, into, like, a puddle of fresh water, like, away from the ocean. And we put him onto um, a Slayer shirt, actually. And we, we got him back to the normal ocean, <laughs> and, and we saved him. Of any shirt, it's a Slayer, a Slayer shirt. shirt. I can't remember if it was my Slayer shirt or your Slayer shirt or Jeff's Slayer Jeff's. shirt. Maybe Jeff's. He, he was a little bit freaked out when we first put him on the Slayer shirt, but I think he was just scared. He if that, really that more eel would have bit you, then they, aren't their teeth reverse? If you open a more eel's mouth, they have two rows of teeth. They have these rows of teeth, and they have an inner row of teeth, almost like you had a mini row of teeth inside that. Like almost if you have two sets of teeth. How come you weren't a scientist? I know. I always wanted to be. I am a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> um, and all those teeth, they curve inward. So when they grab something, they hold it. That's what the inside of a moray eel's mouth looks like. And I've looked. I've seen. So what, what was your favorite country we visited and filmed on Wild Boys? I, I loved everywhere for different reasons. In Me too. Yeah. I love Thailand. Oh, uh, Thailand was amazing. And we've all the tuk tuk races and the martial arts stuff. I loved I, it. Oh, yeah, I love that because it's like so much fun. It was I go, fun. I want to go to Thailand. I do too. I want to. I'm going to move to Thailand. Don't you? Kind of in a way. Well, I'm, I mean, the Philippines is pretty <laughs> oh, yeah. close. To it is. You, we pretty much get our Southeast Asia, yeah, you know, energy out Asia without the kickboxing. Yes. We Philippines can. have some rad martial they, arts too. Oh my god! I yeah. just Especially remember, if you like knives, and you know I do. I just remember that we shot this one <laughs> martial arts skit where the guy, the piece of wood was like ten feet or some really high in the air, and he somehow can kick and do a backflip, and yeah. it was amazing. I was like, this is so cool. It was the crew of um, who's that th that Thai martial art guy? I'm gonna break the the wall right now. Uh, who's that mar that Thai martial arts the star? Guy. Um. No, Johnny. Did you say Johnny? Yeah, it's probably um, Johnny. Oh, I'm on back. Um, Tony Jaw. So, uh, close we, enough. so that guy that, <laughs> that did that flip was from Tony Jaw's crew. Wow. And, um, that was so cool. It was amazing. All those martial arts guys there were rad. And remember, like, um, actually, we were split crews. I had to actually go to the Thai massage place. Where I got massaged oh, by you. by six dudes at once, <laughs> but um, oh, but poor you. the other crew got to go to the Muay Thai place where it's like this place. It's all little kids that are training. It's almost like an orphanage, right? Like it's a, a good way to get out of poverty when you're mm -hmm. a kid if you're good at Muay Thai, is to become a professional Muay Thai fighter because it's their it's their national sport. So yeah. all these little kids that were just badass. I like Muay Thai a lot. I love Muay Thai too. It was so hot there. So hot. Like guess you couldn't even wear a baseball hat. Yeah. Well, the monsoons hadn't come yet when we were there, so yeah. it was We're lucky. Humidity is just—it's <sighs> killer. Like, it's gnarly. It's, it's gross. I never really thought of like how smart this was until we visited there. It's like the hats that they wear—they kind of like 
Oh yeah, yeah. going they, out like that. But they, mm-hmm. it's like they rest on your head, but there's airflow going through totally. your head. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, that is the smartest invention. Whoever thought yeah. of that. Yeah. I I, I I hope we get to go back to Thailand yeah. and film Well, our more. next podcast with Rick Kosick is going to be in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> we're all going to melt. Remember, we're remember, gonna, we're do, do I want to go back and get a, a tuk-tuk race. Can oh, yeah. The tuk-tuk yeah, race yeah. was so sick. And and remember... um, It was like I, a movie we made. Yeah, it was so awesome. Was I, so I, I We got to go back to Thailand and film. Remember, um, God... That they to thank everyone, they ordered massages for Thai massages for everyone, oh, and um, someone so ordered a, um, Mike Ellis ended up getting a male masseuse. So I guess some people's masseuses were regular masseuses, and some were not regular masseuses. Like, is in a male is a regular, or no? Well, the the male <laughs> masseuse um, who Mike Ellis got ended up like running his his hand a little bit up his thigh oh. to give Mike Ellis a happy ending, but oh. Mike Ellis refused it. He like he he I guess he calmed the guy down. Really. <laughs> Or, or no, he 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 made it understood that he wasn't interested in that kind of massage, according to him. But, <laughs> but no one but, knows. But no, no, no one really one knows, knows what happened. They were the only ones. It was just the two, and he he said he refused it. People say in Thailand they do things that they never thought they would do before. At least that's what I've heard from a guy that I grew up with. That first person I ever met to go to Thailand, he's like, I did things I never thought I would do. I just remember like <laughs> I'll never forget that. It was so hot there that we. Shot all day, went back to the hotel, <laughs> we swim, mm-hmm. eat dinner, and pass out by 10 o'clock. Oh, yeah. It oh, yeah. That was or every night. Every that was night. so early. So nice. I invented this game called um, Crocodile or Alligator. I can't remember which, but I would hang out like at the bottom of the pool when everyone was going around perfectly still. And then I sne- I snatch them and pull them underwater. You do that all the time. That's when I invented it. Okay. Uh, in Thailand. He does that all the time. Every time but in the pool, he's on like the bottom. Poor Greg still. Wolf couldn't swim. Aww. Oh yeah, and and so snatching him, uh, <laughs> snatching him was all those. I was so happy so, to see the wolfies at your birthday party. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I really was. Wolfies so rules. Good. Yeah. Rule. And that was when everyone was giving Wolfie swimming lessons every night in Thailand. Wolfie received swimming lessons. In um, oh, man, so learn to do handstands underwater. That's really cute. Yeah, and he came back from the trip an expert swimmer. I wouldn't say an expert swimmer, but he could swim. He could swim. <laughs> I remember yeah. we were at the uh, <laughs> in Mexico and uh, Cancun area yeah. where we had to jump in the water and uh, where those caves. Cenote? Cenote. Thank you. Underwater caves. Yeah. Yeah, Sinkles. and they made Wolfie get in the water, and he. Oh. See, and he had a panic swim. attack. Yeah. That was, was when it was discovered that Wolfie couldn't swim. It was really like he, I, they had to pull him out. It was time to teach Wolfie how to swim. Wow. And ended up being an excellent swimmer. Yes. Better than others. <laughs> 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 Scuba diving in, in caves is pretty freaky. Like yeah. you, you don't oh, know yeah. where you are. I don't like the thought of that. Either. I don't care no, for it. No. But um, it's neat looking. It, yeah. And I am pretty experienced with. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's really easy to get lost. Like, like I've always known you as a really very good swimmer. Like yeah. you and and diving and and being in the crocodile, alligator, whatever you want. want like you know, yeah. you're always on the bottom. Yeah, I'm. I li- I li- I'm totally happy and comfortable in the water. Yeah. But and we play the the safety boat. <laughs> yeah, where where he pretends to be the safety boat, so I just hold on to him because he's like, <laughs> I want to see how long I can actually like float for and have you. Like, hold on to Training. me. If we, yeah, if we if were I, ever in the situation where we were stuck. Because you know, like, that couple that went to Hawaii got mm-hmm. left out um, from their snorkeling tour? There was a snorkeling group. tour. They, the boat left them. Oh, my God. And apparently, there was, like, 46 of them or something L- like Luckily, they, they, they were able to make it to shore, to, but yeah. they were left behind. And, and he ain't eaten by a shark. Yeah. You know, but, yeah, that it's has worse. happened. It happened on when I was in Australia once in the Great Barrier Reef. A woman was left out on the reef, which yeah. if you're left out on that reef, you're not making it back. That's why if I, I'm ever on one of those dive boats, I'm like, my name's May, blah, blah. Hey, <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Look at, wear some feathers. So I Don't forget myself. me. The oh, yeah, feather yeah, girl, yeah. the girl on the bar, totally. she's like here. I trained myself to, to like try to be able to float on my back for as long, I pretty uh, much where I can sleep on my back like a sea otter in the water. And, and hopefully if someone needs to use me as a raft, they can. Yeah. It's all with certain breathing and stuff, but... But um, I practiced it a lot intentionally, and just in case I'm ever in a bad situation and the boat goes down. Yeah, he's the door in Titanic. You never know. Yeah, he's, he's the door. You got sunburned in Indonesia. Yeah, it was. Uh, we were shooting Wild Boys there, and uh, this the sun and the just it just just fried my neck. You want to know what happened to me in Indonesia with my health, skin? 
I don't remember. I, uh, I, from swimming in all the swamps in the jungle, like over and over, I got the gnarliest rash below my, oh, my, I remember in my that. private area. I remember you sharing and, that with everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So we first got, got to Bali from filming in India for, this was a long filming trip. Like, and, um, like we'd been in India already for weeks and I was going pee our driver, uh, the driver of my particular car that like we were split up in a few different buses came out. I went, we stopped to go pee and he snuck up on me. A Balinese man, and he took a peek. He's spying on me while I'm peeing. He's like, "Big banana." Oh, he said that to me, and I was like, "Oh my god, this this guy's a character." Anyway, the days went on, and then my rash kicked in, and like Cordell, our sound engineer, wouldn't even sit by me. What do you think like, it was? Why? How did you get it? Just from swimming in the swamp, sweating. Like we were in in the jungle, all those days of humidity. Was like, it? Do you think? Shot. Do you think you Crunch picked rock. it up in India? Because we were in India two weeks prior. It, it started in India. Yeah, you got it. I always wonder if, if the Agoris had something to do with it. Oh, definitely. Those cannibals we filmed with, and they're putting spreading the, the human ashes. Oh, right when we yeah. started filming, they started spreading human ashes all over our bodies. And Black Boom Mubaba, their leader, was like, dead body, burning ash. And he's, he, um, I, he gives it to us to spread on. He immediately takes a scoop and starts scrubbing it on my balls. It definitely, <laughs> it was definitely ash of someone who had yeah, herpes. On my, <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing. It didn't get burned. It didn't get burned away. Oh, all the, no. It was so gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> it was gnarly. First, first minute I met him, he's rubbing human ashes on my balls and my tallywhacker. So the rash kicked in. Isn't that and, how we met? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it was, it was. One of those times when we went to <sighs> India, I was, I was really fascinated by the Agoris. They had these magic tricks. And like, give me your watch. And oh. I'm like, okay. And boom, he stopped the, to- the, the watch from telling time no and like they did all and like they pick up dirt like look oh, make it smell like a flower and like and like it you actually smell like you, smell, you can smell like a flower it's wow. like these guys had special powers they're most of indian society hates them and basically they feel to get holy is to do basically everything that the rest of society thinks is bad so they like sleep at like the the um, cremation grounds they drink whiskey from skulls but you kind of like doing that didn't you they like uh it was fun hanging out with them it was they're a wild Wild bunch. bunch. <laughs> but like when we tried later on, we tried to film with them with the Jackass guys and they were all, Jackass was all afraid. They're just not as tough as the wild boys. It's just been no. that way. <laughs> But anyway, so we got to Indonesia and my rash got so bad and like I could barely walk and like Jeff, I remember Jeff being like, come on, Chris hustle. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like that. And then, then he, I show him later. He's like, oh, the guy who liked my banana earlier in the trip, like, stopped looking at my banana. <laughs> and, so, so it was on your it. on your your scrotum. It was on my scrotum, yes. Wow. Um, and it was it was really bad. Like once it, I got it, I couldn't. It was hard to get rid of. Oh, so I had to wear a skirt. And eventually, once I got it back out of the tropics, it went away. And yeah. It was quite right. Yeah, Cordell Severe. wouldn't even sit on. Yeah. He wouldn't sit by me. I felt so isolated, like so ostracized. Aww. Yeah, he's like. I'm not saying by you. <laughs> Remember the day we went uh, the Temple Kama Sutra in India? Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, actually, is this the temple where the rats are, or no? No, no that's a different no, temple. Different temple. Okay. But this, this is the the Kama Sutra temple where it's all these carvings of people in sexual positions. And Steve-O was having a crisis at the time. Oh, oh. major one. He, really? he stormed off set. Oh, he was upset. Major. Yeah. Why? Because he was sexually deprived. Because some friends of his. Um, were making him worried that he, that he was acting too gay on TV. Oh. And and um so he had this You can never be too gay panic on TV. Attack. I know. But at the time, you know, Wild Boys was pretty cutting edge and uh, you know, this kind of humor wasn't as accepted by everyone, especially some of Steve's conservative friends. Let's talk about the rats. Um, shall we? <laughs> so tell me about these rats. That was Tell me about this temple of rats. The rat temple was gnarly. <laughs> I did not like that day at all. Oh, yeah, it was no, that was early on in the trip to India. And, and you couldn't wear shoes, right? You, no, you, you had to wear take, booties. I think boots, right? Yeah, well, you want to because there's well, I was poop barefoot everywhere. Every, oh, oh, well, gross, I mean, me and Steve Chris. had to be barefoot. We were, we were well, on I mean, camera. Rodents, they constantly are pooping and peeing everywhere they go. Oh, yeah, so it was gnarly. It's just, just filthy. Oh, it was gross. really filthy. You would not have cared for the I place. I would have not have. This temple would not have been your place to no. pray. But it's very sacred. Very uh, sacred. Well, You've been blessed. I'm there's, cool. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine with going through my life of not going. You know, through there's a legend, a, a story that you know made these special rats sacred. You know, that goes no back to. No offense to. to the but uh, people. but yeah, like it's gnarly. If you're not into being around a lot of rats, no. you know, there's also dirty places in America. For example, Echo Park Lake. <laughs> Have you ever swam in it? No. <laughs> For example. 
I uh, <laughs> I've swam in Echo Park Lake not once but twice. Actually, I was there not too long ago. I was doing a drone shot for one of my my videos I'm making. Yeah, and it was beautiful. I'm like wow, they, they, like they cleaned up the park all oh, really nice. nice. Oh, this was years before they cleaned it up and drained it. This was back in the yeah. day. So I can and imagine. It, yeah, this is back in the day. This Echo is Park why Lake. You got itchy. Well, the first time me and my friend Scott late at night, we got a great idea. We climbed over the boathouse. To, we wanted to go ride one of the pedal boats in the lake. So. There was only one that wasn't chained up, so it was just parked on the, it was on top of the dock. So we put it in the water and we were on, we we're in the middle of the lake, like, ha ha, wahoo. All of a sudden, some water starts sinking in it and woo, we straight to the bottom. So me and Scott, you know, like we had to swim in filthy water. And um, then, like, ne- a few days later, some friends were visiting and I was like, we had so much fun on that. Let's go back and do it again. <laughs> and so we go back out on the lake, climb over. But this time, I, I'm going to admit to a crime right now. I brought some wire cutter, <laughs> cutters. Oh yeah, while <laughs> while we were swimming in, there was like drug dealers in the park, and they were cheering for us. Like it was so <laughs> rad that we'd done it. I climbed over the top, cut an actual working boat with my wire cutters. Two boats actually. Scott and I picked up our friends, and we like had just a party on the lake for like an hour and a half. Wow. Somehow, and we were you know the fountain in the middle of the lake. I was like walking around on it, falling off. I ended up you know. You know, as luck would have, as things would have it, I ended up in the water again. We had a great time. Somehow, like, no police showed up. We're screaming and yelling at the top of our lungs. It's Echo Park in the 90s. It's Echo Park. 2000s. It was the 90s. Yeah, it's Echo Park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're good. It was a lot different back then. Yeah. It's way different now. Yeah. It's- well, there's a lot of controversy right now. Why? What's up? Because they, uh, they took the fence down around the park mm-hmm. and the whole neighborhood's pissed because they were worried that the homeless would come in and just take over the park again. Because they had taken it over. Huh? Oh, it was gnarly. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. So we'll see what happens. I haven't been there in so long. Echo Park is a place of changes. Yeah. Like, it goes through so many, like, it goes like, it was like, you know, kind of sketchy. Then it got like really like hipster. Then, yeah. then the hipsters. I loved it. Yeah, it's, it's, I think a great, it's nice. It's an yeah. awesome neighborhood. Yeah, I love it too. Stoked that I've swam in that lake. Did you work on a zombie show ever? I did work on a. I was a set photographer for a zombie show shot here in the valley. It was, oh, called, was it called Death Valley. Oh, nice. This was, back to, this was like before the zombie show craze. Yeah, it was like wow. a, it was like a zombie werewolf, vampires, like police precinct. And uh, it was it was fun, it was, and uh, it was great, you know. And but it was a really tough job in a way because it you worked in the middle of the night. You yeah, know, yeah. it's yeah. filmed throughout the night, but it was cool. Are you a zombie show movie watcher? No, no, not at all. Don't I like mean, the if horror? there's something, don't like the genre. I mean, if it's good, yeah, I, I'll I watched Halloween. Yeah, you know, even the original one. I I reckon you'd like Last of what? Us. What show are you right now? You're watching the Wu Tang show. Right now, I'm watching the Wu Tang show. Nice. Wow, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. I got into it right when the pandemic started, and it was like I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be incredible! I can't wait for the second season. But then it took a long time for them to make the second season mm-hmm. because uh-huh. you know how we went through mm-hmm. with the movie, and then uh, so I think I lost a lot of steam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and but. I tell you, to anyone who's watching this and has not watched season two, I highly recommend it. It's incredible. Awesome. We got to film with Method Man on Wild Boys. Mr. Myth. Yeah. He was super cool, too. Love it. We filmed the Western thing with him. So first, season one is basically development of everyone's character in the group. Mm -hmm. And it kind of gets going, but season two is like, put on your seatbelts. It's so fun. Wow. I was like, oh, my God, I got to start writing. I got to start doing this. It got me so hyped and inspired, yeah. you know, because, yeah. like, it's really cool, you know. It's like, so I'm kind of bummed. I'm, I'm almost finished with it. So is it actors playing yeah. Wu-Tang Clan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so someone plays Old Dirty Bastard. And yeah. Stuff. You know, gr- Steve and I did a show once with with Old Dirty Bastard. Um, ODB, a, for sure. Steve saw Old Dirty Bastard naked. Oh, wow. Or, or I think they were showing each other Naked, each other's yeah. wieners or something. That's weird. I wasn't yeah. there, but I heard about it. I think I think ODB was a weird dude. So ODB was showing his wiener, and then Steve in return was like, yo, check out my balls. Come on, <laughs> yeah. They were sh- I think so. Down. Something like that. Like, yeah. <laughs> and what did Steve think? As I rem- are, you want me to be honest? Yeah. I, I don't think Steve was very impressed with the look of <laughs> ODB's wiener, as I remember <laughs> it, for him telling me about it. I uh, didn't really spend much time with Old Dirty Bastard, but- but uh, he was I one of the other acts on the bill. Oh, okay. I was like, where were you? When- yeah. It was like a bunch of different acts. Like, okay. It was like almost like the way a festival would be. So Steve ended up hanging out with ODB and they 
saw each other naked, I guess. Yeah, but. so watching this show <laughs> made me revisit all their music again. Uh-huh. And I got my kind of super obsessed, obsessed watching like old martial art movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 I don't know. I just, I love it, you know? Did you ever, um, were you into martial arts movies when you were a kid? I think I was, yeah. And I still enjoy like the ones that would come through. And um, oh, did you watch the the Academy Award winning film, The Everything Everywhere? Yeah, oh, yeah. I loved yep. it. That's amazing. Loved it. it was amazing. And I love the fight scenes. Yep. Like, I wasn't ready for. It. I was like, I got all excited. It's incredible. Long scenes too. Yeah. That's why. I, I mean, it was I watched amazing. The, I watched the movie. All the shots were. I watched it the day of the award show, uh-huh. and I wish I would have saw it in the theater because that's a movie you really want to see on the big screen. Mm-hmm. Speaking of martial arts, did you once beat up a drug dealer? I don't. No. By the name of, by the name of. Oh. Oh, of course that's a drug dealer's name. It yeah. sounds like a drug dealer. I, I, you yeah. know what? Let's call him a drug dealer. Let's just say he was unhappy. I don't think he, no, he wasn't a drug dealer. He was just wasted and kind of being weird and. And you used martial arts on his ass. I used the school of Nigel. Oh, so. Oh. Oh, you know, okay. and everything he taught me came in the one, two, in my right Queensberry oh, yeah. rules boxing is a martial yeah. art, if you ask me. Dang. And he was wasted, and I was at someone's house. I'm not going to make any names. He's um, a bully. And he was constantly just throughout the night taking jabs at me. Yeah. And, and, when and then he, you took some jabs. No, and when he threatened to throw me over the balcony, I'm like, that's it. I snapped. Uh-huh. I got, you know, I'm a, I'm a nice, gentle giant. Yeah. But when push comes to shove, and you push me to that edge, mm-hmm. I'm not coming back. No yep. way. And I'm I'm vicious. Yeah. Yeah. He and is. So <laughs> he kicked yeah. his. I heard about it. I heard Rick kicked his ass. <laughs> yeah. So basically, in the rule of fighting, yeah, guys have a tendency to grab your shoulders. Right. Okay. And it's some for some reason. And then that's when you just go uptown city right into their face. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh-huh. And that's what Nigel taught me, and I remember that. The, the clinch up. It and always the, goes clinch up. And, like then, the, and then I city. choked him yeah. out. I threw him up against the wall, and I put my forearm, I choked him. Uh-huh. Red, red. And he I'm, deserved every bit of it. Oh, yeah, he was and, being a jerk. And he actually cried, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, that's rad. You know, he was wasted, but, you know, all that emotion coming out and <laughs> suppressed uh, energy, you know, and I left, I apologized to my friend. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do this. I'm out of here. And he stormed out of the house looking for me. And Oh, he was going to, he wanted more? Oh, or he wanted to get beat up to... even more. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Oh, he was a oh. You put him in. You put the bully in his place. Well, yeah. Good, good for you. Oh, you know yeah. that was when we around when we met Nigel. He was a a boxer that did some stuff on Jackass with us. Mm-hmm. Great boxing. And he and he taught us about boxing, like not in particular. I I got I got attacked by a gentleman around that same time mm. when I was at mm. JP's house. And um, oh yeah, yeah. You guys seem to get attacked. And I, a lot. I remember. You know, normally I was more of a. a it wasn't uh, the the Queensbury Rules boxing okay, wasn't my me, fighting tell style. Tell me the name of the gentleman that attacked you. He's no the, longer with us. He's dead. Oh, yeah. okay. I not because of me, but no. He, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Speaking of celebrities and um, fighting, what happened years ago for Big Brother? You interviewed Ronnie James Dio. Who I did also R.I.P. Of, Come on. All right. <laughs> we got this, all right. Oh, I Big, love Dio, has, but we, so does but Rick. We all love we're, Dio. We're, we, I love Dio. So Chris Naraco was in Taurus for really edgy interviews and right. kind of you know take digs and they were fun, but you know kind of on the line of not you know on the cuff it, on the cuff of you know offensive. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So Naraco went and asked all these fans like, "What questions not to ask Dio?" And he took no, like, he doesn't like being called little or all this stuff. And so it was me, Spike, we're filming, and Chris interviewing Dio. Chris Naraco, not me. Chris, yeah, Chris Naraco. And then asked all these questions, and he just be like, yo, Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like saying, that. Saying his, the name wrong and. Yeah, all this stuff, you know, I, and he just got so pissed that he stormed off, tore up the, you know, the the, the agreement. Yeah. And ran out of the, you know, the room and, you know, Spike ran with his camera with the one direction and I ran the wrong direction and I got choked out by the bodyguards <laughs> or, the, or the club security and they took my tape. Oh, my oh God. no. 
Oh my I'm, gosh. I'm in the back of the House of Blues downstairs trying to run up a hill, get away from the, oh, this, the that's bounce. That's steep hill. <laughs> that hill's so steep. It is. It's, it's so steep. It's, so steep. it's, it's, steep. Steep. it's like the steepest <laughs> it hill in Hollywood, and like, really. And I just get, <laughs> I just get choked out, and they like, take the tape, and that was it. And I was like, oh. All right. With that said, we're huge fans of, of Dio. Oh, Absolutely. I, I love but, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But Narako, yeah, he would, he would get them wound up when he didn't interview yeah. people. And Ryan, didn't years later you and, and Jason uh, Cunha go to like a concert and you were side we stage? Man. We man, we're at a concert in in um mm -hmm. in Ryan James just Dio spotted you. Yeah, he was. We were filming like we were trying to you know test the ideas of a potential TV show. Yeah, and you can actually watch it on my YouTube channel still. Oh, cool. And uh, we were on stage where we shouldn't have been, mm -hmm. and we're like, I got my camera. I'm running this little camera, and there's. And then he starts coming over our way, uh -huh. and like we just duck behind the curtain real quick because the light was getting ready to yeah. swing. <laughs> and he like was pissed, and he looked looked at we man like, "What do you guys like?" During mid song, you yeah. know, and whew, he's amazing. Yeah, oh. He was he was an angry little guy. You're such a huge fan, but all, at the same time, you kind of like to get him. I hear he has. Up. There's a really good documentary about him on Showtime right really? now. Really, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Big Brother was amazing magazine. It was so, so ahead of its time. You I, know. I, I think now I don't know. Yeah. It wouldn't not work now. No we'd way. be we'd be done. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It canceled. would never could never survive now. No, not but, uh, in this day. So you you have a YouTube channel of your own. I do have a YouTube channel and I develop content for it right now. I'm testing ideas. It's at Rick Cossack Films awesome. on YouTube. Maybe you could put a link in the description. Rick right Cossack here. Films <laughs> on YouTube. It's actually a better channel than our channel. <laughs> no. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, um, no. We don't have any content no, yet. No, no. Until when this comes out, your channel will. will probably be thriving. So, you've been gradually working on a book. Yes, I have. Uh, all last year, I decided <laughs> it's time to put something together and uh, tell little short stories about everyone, your wildlife, my exotic life. I started over last summer, going through all my photos and like trying to chisel it down to what would be great, mm -hmm. you know, which was whew, hard. Wow, I, I bet so thousands much. of slides, so <laughs> many, so many <laughs> thousands. So I'm like, okay, thousands. Cool. But I mean, like, as I'm getting down to more than what I think is a, would make an impressive book, um, eh, I just, I'm like, God, this is amazing. It'll be an amazing book. Yeah, it's gonna be really fun. And it covers decades and decades. Of yeah. yeah. Well, not dec. No, not that far. <laughs> <laughs> Three decades at least. No. <laughs> Four decades. Not that far. You All went right. up. You <laughs> went up. <laughs> you know what is crazy, Rick, having you on join us today? I didn't even touch on so many things that I, I thought I would have to touch in because we just, this conversation flowed so much. Yeah. But you know, how, did you have fun making the last movie? I had a blast. I, I didn't want it to be over. Like being with everyone together, like whatever it is we're doing. It's one of those moments in life where I've stopped and been like, there's no place I'd rather be. Like, I love mm -hmm. being Aww. with this group. It's like, we're, we're, we're stuck with each other. Like, and I think the Japanese have a, a word for it, but it means like more than family. Like, oh, that's sweet. Like, yeah, that's I, I can are. feel that. I, I feel that way too. Yeah. You know, and yeah. It went quick, I feel. Well, kind of. It did. It, it, it went way too went quick. It went quick. And plus, like, the circumstance with, like, it was so hard to, like, just filming during COVID. COVID shaped some certain aspects of the film itself. I think we should need to do another one just, you know. I feel like we lacked in the prank department. Because you couldn't. It could was so anything. hard to do pranks because We of did COVID. a couple things, and we really, it was amazing how we were able to get around. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, like, it was it, incredible. I was like, wow, like. This went great. You yeah. know, I'm very impressed. And I love now there's like those big vans, the sprinter vans. Yeah. yeah. It's so much easier to shoot out of those and then be in a little tiny little van. Car. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Stick the biggest guy and then a tiny little back of a yeah. van is like, great. Thanks. Remember like when we were filming like Jackass before it ever came out on TV and like some of the naked stuff and people like, like they didn't know like who we were and they would get pissed. When I look back, one of my favorites was when we abducted Brad Pitt. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love oh, that bit. That I was one of the best bits ever. So much. And it's like, I'm just sitting there, camera out. No one not thinking anything of anything. Uh -huh. They don't, oh, like, whoa, whoa, why is the camera out? You know, I'm just, yeah. and it worked. In front of Pink's. Yeah, yeah like he was in line. Dogs. And we pulled up in a van. We all had like, you know, those, those um, kidnapper masks on. Or, Tell or me like how you guys on. got Brad Pitt to be part of Jackass. I think 
Jackass was so cool that everyone wanted anybody who's a famous in Hollywood wanted to be a part of it. He mm-hmm. loved Jack. Brad loved Jackass. Oh, that's awesome. And Spike had a connection with him, so that's how he got involved. You know, yeah, it was he was so he was super cool. Oh, and the nicest you guy. Know, he was so yeah. into it. He was super stoked, and he was just like one of us when we were out filming. I mean, I was at the time, you know, I was like, I didn't was even was a guy we we're filming with. Like, I wish you guys got a hold of the nine one one calls. Didn't oh, you guys? people! Oh, people did call nine one one. Oh, it was in the oh, newspaper yeah. and everything. Yeah, like they called. Oh yeah, yeah. Brad it was in, Pitt just got abducted. Oh yeah, they yeah. they kidnapped Brad Pitt, and people were like running to like to save Brad Pitt from getting kidnapped. Oh. Like, he had some loyal fans that love. Oh him. yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was one of the best skits we ever did. I think so. Yeah, yeah. that was awesome. And then you did the Night Monkeys. Yeah, same night. Night Monkeys yeah. was fun. That was yeah. yeah. It was fun. It was fun to to have it. it like after the skit, you know, like in the credits where it's like he takes his mask off and it's Brad Pitt. You know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah. he didn't get that hurt filming that one. He didn't get hurt no, at he didn't all. Get hurt, no. Who would you want to work with? Like another famous person that you'd want to work with doing a skit? So possibly for the next Jackass, like five. if you could film with any celebrity. Yeah, if you could. Oh, wow. So who's your dream, and then who's your dream celebrity? I don't. know. Maybe something with Quentin Tarantino. Hmm. Right, because nice. he he knows how to really put together good car chase scenes. Oh yeah, he loves I, Jackass I, I too. Love, well, I don't know if he loves Jackass, oh, but I assume he does. I, I love car chase scenes. <laughs> oh, me too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I am so into that stuff. So, uh, and he's really good at it. Yeah. And so maybe we could work with him, and he would give us the right direction. Ooh, that'd be sick. I mean, he might be stepping on Spike Jones' toes uh, a little bit, but maybe Spike would. You know, okay, cool. Quick, I filmed the car Spike chase scene. Okay. Yeah, with um Knoxville in South Africa. And instead of the stunt driver, I was ended up being the driver, and <laughs> it was sketch. <laughs> like, it was fun though. <laughs> and then, who's your dream? Oh celebrity? God, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. God, pressure. It is pressure. When but you, yeah, something when in my head just keeps saying just Leonardo just DiCaprio. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid to say it. <laughs> But that's what the voice in my head is telling me. Leo. 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 No, you know, I met him and he was awesome. But uh, um, yeah, I'd love for him to film with us, huh? So, Quentin, yeah. Leo. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's my dream, but I don't know who my dream person is. No, was. it is because you always talk about Leonardo DiCaprio. I love Leonardo DiCaprio. In a What's one of your favorite movies of his? Young Guns 2. He had a small part and he was amazing. <laughs> He was, a, he was just a, a young boy actor, <laughs> I think. Uh, was he in Young Guns too? Wow. I think so. Or did I just make that up? Wow, Chris. <laughs> Amazing. Like a small, the smallest cameo. He's like, oh, Leonardo DiCaprio, Young Guns 2. Two. <laughs> like the second one. Young Guns 2. <laughs> oh, yeah, he is in The Quick and the Dead. Oh, yeah. He's the young so boy. So is Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe, I'd like to film with him too. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Mr. I'm a big Crow. fan. And I know I want to see his temper get all riled up. Yes. Yeah. I love it. I'd love to wrestle Russell Crowe. Wrestle Crow. with him. <laughs> yeah. He's a good bloke though. Yeah, he's a good bloke. I think he'd, he'd I think we'd have a great time. Yeah. And even if we did wrestle, it would be just for sport. I love no, Russell no anger. Crow. He's great. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, he'd never seen a chance wrestling me. <laughs> oh, you think? No. No, most Hollywood actors wouldn't. Yeah, but Russell so, Crowe grew up in Australia where that wrestling is not a part yeah. of the school curriculum. No. So, yeah, if it comes so you, to wrestling, you know, Eastern European, Russian, you got to you gotta watch out for. Mm-hmm. But no, countries where they don't wrestle, yeah, Russell would never, he'd be dead in the water. But <laughs> boxing might be, you know, or sword fighting. I saw him in Gladiator. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but well, Russell's so, a good guy, I think. What was your favorite thing we filmed in Jackass Forever? Jackass Forever. Oh, the, the opener for sure. That was your favorite? Like, yeah, I mean, it's one of my favorite things that I filmed because it was just the reality of it, the spectacularness of it. Yeah. Just the film with your penis? Yeah. I mean, of all the, we a lot of fun <laughs> things with the penis. It's just such an underused thing in comedy and the movies in general. People barely, it's this whole thing that subject matter, part of the body, that oh my thing, gosh. tool that most of Hollywood never uses except for us. So yes, the opener of Jackass is one of my favorite things, but all the penis things that we've been lucky it's enough to be It's getting more and more accepted it is to now. play with it. But we're this publicly. comedy tool that every half of the population has at their disposal, but doesn't use. So it gives us the freedom to, you know, 
<laughs> exercise it in any way we want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? I've got to go pick up young X right now. <laughs> so, uh, Rick, thank you so much for for being on our show and, and joining us. And I, I hope you come back um, time and time again, because I have so many more things I wanted us to talk about, but we started talking about all these uh, interesting topics. I, I think it's one of our best shows ever. Yay. All right. Well, thank you for having me on. And yeah, please visit my YouTube channel. I got a wonderful series I'm trying to create called Relentless Ones. I can't wait to see it. Rick Hossack Films. Yes. And what's your website? RickHossackFilms.com. Awesome. I make it easy. Thank you so much for coming, Rick. And I'm honored that I've gotten to, to work pretty much my entire adult career with you. Yeah, I'm, I feel the same. Feeling is mutual. Awesome. So sweet. <laughs> Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do